action. Welcome everyone to Morning Minutes with myself, Michael Bergio and Mark Novak. And this morning we're going to be talking about saving money, adjusting your budgets through property, uh, little tips that we're seeing our clients do and shifts they're making with properties they own, properties they rent, um, and just a different mindset uh, due to basically COVID-19 and just getting more out of the property. Mark, we had, we went into, we're seeing a lot of sort of changes uh, people are doing. And what do you mean? How can people save money through renting? What are we talking about? I'm doing it for, um, uh, people are doing it for sale. People are doing it for with rentals. People are doing it with commercial properties. Uh, they're doing it all right, all round, and I think what people are doing is they're looking at what's essential, and they're looking at making changes property-wise around themselves to what is essential and not essential. Yep. Um, an example of that today is um, we're showing uh, we're showing sales properties, we're showing rentals properties, and the style of people that have inquired over these properties are just adjusting their budgets. So, for instance, with rentals today. Some people are in ex more expensive properties and they don't find it necessary to be in something of that budget. So they want to move something to a lower budget. So we're, you know, we've got properties to tailor to people like that, or we've got people that are not, that are working more from home and they've got less importance to go into the office and they want to invest more into their home office and into their home. So some people are actually going up on their budget. They're saving because they're not commuting to work and traveling to work but they're spending a little bit more on their real estate because they're working from home all the time. And they reckon this is going to be more permanent in their life. Yeah. And I think, but I don't, I don't think there's probably be a better time to be a renter renting a property due, because they, even though you can do the same if you own it as in shifting and changing properties quite quickly, but like there's probably a less emotion to it. If you bought a property and you don't necessarily need this, need that amount of space you could do with a little bit small and rent out the property you bought like i think uh emotionally that's a bit tough for people um but people who are renting a property now's probably the best time to be a renter especially if you're on a month-to-month -month lease because oh, that's something value. you can there's change very yeah. very quickly you were like you're flexible you're mobile you're like an employer saying how can i reduce cost to this week and it's layoff staff if you're at home, um, your answer, how can I reduce cost, is change properties. And that's something that can be done very quickly, especially if you're in a month-to-month -month lease with that. And especially where this isn't, this COVID, like everyone's planning for six months. So I, I, I don't think it's rushing into it or over-exaggerating or, or doing, yes, I know there's other costs associated with moving, but it's, if this is here for six to 12 months, you could make, you could save a fortune by making a transition where you may be in that four bedroom property, but you now you need two bedrooms and you're saving four or $500 a week. And um, you can do that process quite quickly. Like that's a way of just shifting, even if it's just for six months or 12 months, and then you go up. Like this is how we've got to be thinking of how we can reduce costs. Uh, it could be getting rid of the commercial office and getting a bigger yep. home. Like maybe that yep. rent's better. Like and I you've think you've still got we, tax um, deductions. If you've got a if you've got a commercial office that you're getting rid of, and you're going to have a home office at home, there is still tax deductions in your home that you can actually enjoy that you should be taking advantage of. So don't think that if you're going to upgrade your house because you've now got a home office and working from home, maybe full time or part time, you can still claim those deductions. 100%. As um, Luke says, will people still uh, sell and look to rent? Uh, sublet increase it. That's a big one as well, Mark. I think subletting, look at what else is out there. You may be in a larger home that you you don't need. Um, people are looking for sort of offices out there, maybe not working with the quarantine, that one. But I think there's other things you could be looking to do at the moment. But instead of just looking for your landlord for relief or cutting costs that way I think a big one is the overhead and I think we need to look in the mirror up and say do we need this property at this cost what can we do can we make a, a shift or a, a movement everyone's going to be different some people are going to need more out of their out of their real estate some people are going to need less out of their real estate so they can, either way there's money that can be used as a money saving device by switching your property and today for example if 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 
it's really compelling, guys. If you have a look around at, at the price of some of the rentals, um, mm. I, you know, like I know, look, unfortunately, it's pretty hard to admit, but I know I've, I've got a lovely unit, which is a two bedroom unit in Curl Curl. I'm generally getting around 700 a week. I've just rented it for 550 a week um, because 7750 a week. But it, for me, it was more about convenience. It was like, you know what, let's just lock someone in until December. In December, yes. I'll, be, I'll be a hero. Now, to the tenant who took that property, like Rich to them, they've actually done pretty yeah. good. They've got, a, they've, got a, they've got a quite an incredible two-bedroom unit um, that was renting for a lot more. My point is, if you want to, if you stay shy, stay dry. If you're not going to be active in this environment to save money, you won't save money. If you're not going to be in, in, uh, active in this environment to take advantage of, of some of the bargains that are out there, you're not going to save money. So now is the time. If you come and see a property with us today, we can have you approved and keys, lease sign and keys given to you on the spot. Yeah, and I think a big thing out there is one, uh, and what you need in your agent as well. We're open today, open like a lot of people. A lot of people through the quarantine have sort of put their head in the stands. We've spoken a lot about keeping productivity, productivity up. Uh, we're open today and we feel it was a duty. These landlords are going through a tough time at the moment and they need every opportunity for their agent to rent their property. This is the time, time people have time. So that's and why tenants. we're open. And tenants need property as well. Even though how many, how many calls they, have we got from tenants that can't afford their rent? Well, the perfect yeah. thing is just to move to something that's a bit more economical at the moment. It's true because a lot of it is there's not free money out there. You're paying it back. Like there's no free money. So if you're, you may get away with it for a couple of months of just getting by, but is it a long-term plan? You've got to be looking at your budget for six to 12 months, not just week to week. And if you can't see within the budget affording that property at that level, then look to change properties uh, and relieve that stress as well, amongst other things. And a big thing, the Mark go through, you mentioned snap approvals, instant approvals. Talk us through that. Like I know some of the biggest headaches is the biggest headache for a landlord is potentially vacancy and time vacant. And also biggest stress is from when a, a tenant sees it online or hears about a property to view it and then to view it, to get the application and then to get the application approved. Like this can sometimes drag on three days, the five truth, days, the, two the, weeks. The, what the are we doing is, different for our landlords? The truth is our office was lazy and the whole real estate industry was lazy in getting tenants approved. Because in this day yeah. and age with DocuSign, in this day and age with, with um, communication, it is, it is so easy to get a tenant improved on the spot. You know, and Tenant Reference Australia for credit checking, all that stuff with all the access yeah. to it. You know, a tenant used to have to print. Do you remember? I remember tenants used to have to come in that ask you to photocopy their bank statement or they'd ask you to photocopy. Yeah. Like now, it's with mobile phones, email, all that, you know, the industry should be able to approve a tenant on the spot. And that's what yeah. we've moved towards in the last in the last week because we looked at our business and said, you know what, we are a bit sloppy, floppy and a bit slow and it is important to get these tenants approved straight away. Let's do it. Yeah. And it's, it, you're right. Like I know a biggest, I even, I spoke to, I've spoken to a few brokers and at the moment they're, they're very happy with how quickly people are getting information to them. Like the biggest pain uh, I think for landlords and uh, agents were you, you, you need not a lot of information, but there is some basic information you need. And there was always a lot of time to get that. How many applications did you get, which had so many missing documents, just like brokers. I think their biggest stress is getting the information. I know now in this environment, they're loving it because everyone's home, everyone's got time. Um, but with technology, that just assists with pre-approvals on the spot, instant approvals. Um, and the technology, like we can access that. Yep. Uh, I think it's Ticker, the blacklist database. You can access that basically instantly. You can get statements instantly. Uh, you can get references virtually instantly. There's no, besides laziness, there's not many obstacles preventing a an on-the-spot application. No, it's it's got to be done. And that's great for tenants because today if they see something and they want to be moving over the weekend, we can approve them, give them the keys. They can be moving their furniture on, on um, Sunday and Monday or Sunday and comfy in there. So it's actually, it's 
you know, and in an environment where I think a lot of real estate agencies are closed today, I think guys take advantage of um, of of, uh, of us being open, take advantage of the good prices, and and this translates to commercial property, and this trans for sale yes. and for rent, for rent as well, and this translates to residential property for sale as well. It's actually, I believe it's the eye of the storm. I believe the storm, you know, and I said it the other day, like a twister, you know, the twister. When you're in the middle yep. of that of that cyclone twister, it's calm. It's, it's calm. I believe it's actually been um, a holiday. Everyone's t- together with their family. Um, you know, it's calm. I believe we ripped into into Easter like a like a cyclone, mm. and I think it's it'll, and I think it's the center of it. Now it's only going to get better. Yes, it's going to rip out. Um, so there's still going to be carnage on the way out, but I, I think it's the time to get good value, guys. I think it's a time yeah. to um, to save some money. Couple of questions for uh, little statements by Luke. Month to month for landlords on insurance. Uh, that may be relating to we advertise month to month, month leases. So guys, uh, yes. that's another thing. Oh, yes. Another thing yes. That, that it's good. Explain it, Michael. Explain it. Yes, yeah, so that's basically um, in transition. You can take a, a property just for a month lease. Um, could be for quarantine, could just for be transitioning between, but that's just adapting. Like there's a lot of things um, that we're, we're trying, we, you need to innovate. Like business is changing, the landscape is changing. And I, I find with like anything in, in life, if you don't adapt or just try and run with it, you're just going to be left behind. It's like people who didn't take FPOS when it first came out because they were anti-FPOS and it's just like <laughs> you lose business, you know, like it's just you've got to be evolving and constantly thinking and and looking what people need, not what we need. What do people need? And some people need only accommodation for a month. So let's yep. offer that. Um, and people look, want, need uh, to make uh, decisions quicker. So let's do short application time frames. And the one month leases that we're offering across all of our tenancies, the tenant can stay there for five years, but yeah. you may, they may just find that they just at the moment, given their budget, they just want to move into something for, for a month and be flexible. And they, they, they may stay there for six. They may stay there for three years, but it's just that I honestly think as an industry committing tenants to a six or 12 months lease is actually a fallacy. Is that, it, it's, it's false. It's well, just, what it does is, it these it's, days it's, anymore? It like doesn't. No one does it. This. No one does it. Your phone contracts a month to month. Netflix contracts. is month to month. Like gym. Everyone's come away from it. You want the phone? Oh, you got to sign up for three years. No way. Now they do this BYO plan that you can move around. Yes. It's happening everywhere. Lease to see twelve month leases in residential is archaic. Commercial, it's different because you pin the tenant to um to that term and they're committed. They have to pay out that term if they want to move. Yeah, but that's not. But the, they, it also the works for them. Yeah, it also works in commercial because if you're investing half a million or a hundred grand or fifty grand, building it, fitting it out for you, you want that security. You want the tenure. So yeah. it, it's it, it's very different in the commercial sector. But for residential, I think people need to wake up and just evolve. Like every every other part of our lives are. You give good service, I'll stay with you. I'll be loyal. Don't try and lock me into a contract to be loyal because in all other sex, 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 not sex, uh, sector, loyal, oh, sex, uh, oh, all other sectors, sec- um, sectors, sectors, <laughs> sex, sectors, um, you give good service, we'll be loyal. Simple. Same with properties. Maintain your property. Have a good property, and we'll stay. Uh, okay. And and vice versa. Be a good tenant. Pay your rent. Treat it well, and we'll keep you. And so uh, the landlord, the, the landlord will. Yeah. So tell me, how how can people save money today with real estate to improve their budget? What's the takeaways? The takeaway is assess what you actually need, and if you need to make a change with property, then look at it. I think that's the biggest one. Take a step back. Everyone's looking at what I'm spending at Uber Eats and all that, but look at, look at the roof above your head. Look at the address on your business card. Do you need it? Uh, can you make a shift? Are you in a property that was under a 2019 model of business? Look at what the your business will be, look like for the next six months, maybe 24 months, and does that property still suit? And have a look at the value that's out there. 
Like do That's your, a big do one your, as well. Do, do yourself a favor, guys. Have a look on Real Commercial or have a look on realestate.com at some, or have a look on Novak website. Don't forget it, forget about the other two. Um, have hmm. a look on the on the portals and have a look on, on social media, wherever you're consuming property. And just be open, open your mind to it because I just think it's a terrific time. I know it's a terrific time to make a move and save some money. Like the value that's on the table for resi rents, for commercial rents, for buying and for buying or either of those commercial, it's very good. It's the exact same concept as a landlord uh, in this time is refinancing at a cheaper interest rate. As a tenant, you need to be doing the same. Because just because you rented a property four years ago and that's what market was, market changes. The market value changes and you could be getting more for your money. Um, simply. Yeah, more for your money. More, more for, for your, your money. money. Good call. More for your money. Uh, at, the mo- at the moment, that's a fact. You are buying more for your money today when you're or renting more for your money today than you were 12 weeks ago. You've got an appetite do it yeah so i think that's the biggest takeout today you can get more for your money buying renting and selling look at it um engage an agent for some advice we're, we're here we're always we're always here what else do anything else on that mark saving money adjusting your budgets with property uh selling yeah. and renting buying so selling i think the biggest one with selling it's the same thing as well but i i think what there was one thing I heard uh, last week with Tom Panos about uh, we've spoken a lot. We spoke about a year ago, Mark, uh, compression, decompression when you're selling. Price, 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 price compression. Price compression. Yes, yes, yes. And yes. it resonated Love last it. week when uh, Tom said people are affected more by losing a dollar than gaining a dollar. That was a um, big one. That was a big one. I just one. want to go through that now. Yeah, I, I, I was a bit of a aha. Very true because – we're on the outskirts. We're we're here on front line, looking from the outside within of people's emotions, and we're thinking like, now's a great time. Like, yeah, you sell your unit for eighty grand less, but you buy that house for two hundred grand less. What? Why are you hesitating? But the reality is, people hurt more when they're when they're copying a loss. So they they um they're a bit cautious to take the eighty grand loss, even though they're buying for two hundred grand less. They almost people rather. Uh, sell for 80 grand more and pay 300 grand more just they'd like rather, they feel like they, rather, yeah, they sold they'd rather die in a sinking ship um than, than hop than, than um hop a ship and feel hop the sh- hop off the ship and get onto a better ship it's weird and i, I he yes. said it really really well i can't remember the psychology uh there was he was referring to some study that was done or some professor yeah some book that, or that, something that, like that, that yeah made, that made the comment but the comment was generally um if you if you if you lost a dollar, it is so much more painful uh, and memorable to a human than making a dollar. And I was like, yes. and, and it was fact it was factual. And I was like, wow. And I think like when we're talking about selling, we need to really look like selling a property or doing a property transaction is not just that one part of selling that one property. You have to factor in what you're buying. And look at yep. the overall position. Do not look the at net, it just net, uh, net, the net, net position. The net position. Yep. You sell for that. You buy for that. You got your transaction cost. What's your net position? Not to mention, not taking a. Like, and also the biggest thing is, what's your family need? Not just the dollars. If you've yep. got five people in a two-bedroom apartment, it's almost like who cares about the net position? It has to be done. Like be done. make that buck. And what we've said always, like if you're downsizing, just it has, there's a lot of things that have to be done. But even if you're uh, looking at it, look at your net position. I know it's a little different if you're selling for one five and now you get one three. Like that's a little different, but there's ways you can structure it to be better off, or you may do it in a two stage approach um, yep. with that type of analysis. Uh, however, a comment from Bill here. However, guys, as agents, we need to not forget that we work for the landlord's best interest. As owners of a property management specialist company, uh, management special company, Express, I always prefer to have tenants commit to a 12-month lease, ensure that the client has stability. Otherwise, tenants will keep shopping around and jumping around from property to property. That yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't necessarily agree with that. 
I don't necessarily agree with that, Bill. I, I think that, you know, the... Thank you for your comment, Bill. Appreciate it. What's, yeah, great. what's your thoughts, Mark? Yeah, yeah, positive reinforcement. Um, look, I, I think in this day and age, people are just chasing convenience. And I think Telstra had that ethos with mobile phone bills, lock them in, lock them in, lock them in, lock them in. But the reality is, Bill, that, you know, to move an entire house, like it's it's you know it's not something that you're not going to punish yourself and do that every month you're not going to mm. punish yourself and do that every six months at the end of the day if you've got that if you've got that mix right and you and you enjoy the property you're there for a couple of years you're not going to be yeah. in and out of it so i think irrelevant to the tenure i think you know as long as that tenant's got that mix right um the emotional, you know, reinforcement of a fixed term lease. I don't know. I don't think it, I don't think it matters these days. And, and now they can use and that. They reduce the penalties. They reduce the penalties, the penalties if you do break them. So it's it's sometimes the we we see in some deals the the paper is not worth what it's printed on. Um, no. And we are just seeing that shift of just how consumers act is they want flexibility. It doesn't mean they'll change. So I think it, it just it, it's just having that right. We manage property deals all over Sydney. Just comment from Bill. We manage properties yeah. all over Sydney, and we seek markets in different suburbs, have different vacancy. Hundred percent, it, it, it's true. Like a lot of our, like it's all different. You know what else, Bill? Um, the um, when we start advertising a couple of weeks ago, there's one month, there's one week lease. Our inquiry rates went up, but no, um, the amount of people that actually executed the one month leases was very low. Um, oh, yeah. So Everyone it, it was a, wanted six. Yeah, it was. It was. It, it was. The concept was attractive because it was a little bit carefree. Um, but the reality was different. You know, when they when they signed up, they're like, "Oh yeah, look, I, you know." So we we're open to it. But I think, I think, um, and the big thing that, there, Mark, open, is what you said previously: the the moving. People don't want to be moving a lot. So, Pain but now. they also are very conscious of. I don't want to. I, I want to know if I like this property. It's one of those things. It's not like a car. You can't really try before you buy sort yep. of thing. And um, sometimes people need that a little bit of um, perceived flexibility to engage in, and, and move along. That's it. That's a take. Perfect. Thank you very much for the comments. Uh, Bill, Luke, as always, really appreciate you guys jumping on. This will be a podcast uh, that you can access all our content and uh, we'll be back on Monday morning as well. And have a great, lovely Saturday, guys. Happy Easter, beautiful people. Thank you. Cheers. Bye.